Today is going to be our first test fire of the Grozant 3D printable AK bullpup chassis system. It's not a whole lot of introduction to do, so let's just give it a spin. Looks like we've got a bit of a sticky trigger reset. So too much friction in the transfer bars. I wonder if that's down to the paint. No brakes, no significant malfunctions. I'd say that's a pretty positive result for an Alpha. Hello, gentlemen. In the previous clip, you saw me test firing the Grozen. And I said, this is something that doesn't really need a whole lot of introduction because I was thinking about my audience being the people that I've been in contact with throughout the development of this project. And I got to thinking that none of those people are here on YouTube. So. <clears throat> May as well throw the video up on YouTube and give it a little bit of context as to what the Grozant project is. So, I've been involved in the orbit of the 3D printed firearms community for several years now, mostly as a builder, consumer of designs. Uh, decided that I wanted to start giving back to the community that's been really good to me. And so I set out to do, you know, to learn CAD and to start developing projects of my own. I've developed a couple of small things, but this is my biggest project so far. Eventually I'd like to do my own firearm. At the meantime though, this chassis system is the biggest one I've got. Uh, eventually hoping to integrate it with the Plastikov fully 3D printable AK, uh, where you just take a parts kit, 3D printable receiver. And build it out. I'd like to integrate that receiver into this chassis system so you could have a functional 3D printed bullpup without the regulated parts. Uh, been working on this off and on since about January. It's April 22nd right now. Now that was with a big hiatus. Um, I took all of Lent off of working on this project because I had been devoting quite a bit of evenings to it and I decided I needed the break. As far as this version of it, this is the Alpha. So it's got some tweaks, it's got some things that are wrong with it. As you saw in the video, we're a little sticky here on the trigger mechanism. Uh, it's always had a bit of friction there, but that was more than typical. So I'm thinking it's down to the paint that I applied to those, uh, those little slider pieces in there, those little transfer blocks. Uh, once it got rolling though, and it and it pulled some of that paint off and started trucking a lot better. Solutions to that, not painting it, would be a good one. Just print it in the color that you want it to be. It does have a fair bit of friction there generally. Um, and, you know, sanding and cleaning those parts and having good tolerances on your print are important. It won't work without that. You could upgrade the hammer reset or the trigger reset uh, spring and make it stronger. That would solve the problem outright. But my design goal with this was to not modify the actual AK at all. I want the guts and all the metal parts from the factory to remain stock. So you can pop it in, pop it out. You don't have to fiddle fart around with a bunch of reconfiguring if you want to take it out of this configuration and put it back into a regular, uh, you know, furniture set. <coughs> as far as the status of this project goes, um, like I mentioned, this is Alpha. 
I had intended to do an open beta, and they should have probably happened already if I hadn't have taken Easter off, or Lent off. Uh, the trouble is that the active part of the 3D printed firearms community is on Twitter. That's They've got some chat applications and chat rooms that they are in, but outside of those, it's on Twitter. And I was uh, real excited to join that community, made an account after the Elon Musk purchase of the website, and I thought, you know, change things around. I know Twitter's got its reputation, but after a couple of months on there, uh, just really was turned off by the most active parts of that community, just a lot of infighting, a lot of drama, and an awful lot of the far left extremist types who are really on the 3D printable bandwagon. And I mean, I'm very live and let live with your political ideologies. I'm not going to get too deep into it on a YouTube video. But suffice it to say, when you've got the types that are literally saying, you actively support my agenda or you are literally committing genocide against me and then it's within my self-defense rights to harm you preemptively, that's insane. And when I see those people coming and talking to designers and creators and saying, hey, toe the line or I'm going to bring harm on you and they say, no, that's insane, I'm not going to do that. And then they threaten to print that person's designs and unalive them with their own designs. Yeah, I'm out. I'm not coming back. I'm done with that community. I'm not going back to Twitter with these. I don't know if I'm going to do an open beta with this or not. I might just continue to develop it for myself. I was really active in Deterrence Dispensed. I really like those guys. Ivan and all of his crew are really great people, but the most violent, vitriolic, loudest members of that community that I was just criticizing, fly that flag. Um, Black Lotus Coalition, they've been real great to me. Real good, real nice guys, real active in uh, you know promoting the community and, and getting designers together and helping them out. If I go back, it'll probably be to those guys, but at the moment I'm just completely turned off of the whole community. So at the moment, this is going to be a personal project. Um, you know, I could release the files when they're complete personally, but I'm not probably gonna go through any established communities at this point at least uh, status on the alpha things that need to be changed and fixed other than this which was revealed by the test I do know that I've got a couple of angles wrong here on the buttstock um, this when you tighten the screws all the way down leverage is open right here which also puts some pressure on those rods and increases a lot of that friction so they're not fully tightened right now I have already corrected those angles in CAD I haven't made a model of this though, not yet. Um, I have to deepen the groove here in the front where this retaining plate holds the front handguard on. You probably saw in the video that this slid forward. Well, the groove that this piece slides into isn't deep enough, so I'm not able to engage the catch. So it was just pressure fit and then leveraged up a little bit. It wasn't actually all the way on. So make that a little bit deeper. Um, as you can see, we've got a bit of some angle issues here. Square that away. And then the upper handguard needs to be adjusted. Uh, I had loosened the tolerances on this. This is one that I found on Thingiverse. This isn't even mine. I will link the creator. I will credit him in the description. I don't remember his name offhand. Um, but I took his and I just printed it. I figured it's good to go. The trouble I was running into with it was that it was very tight and it was very difficult to get it inserted onto the gas tube without cracking. So I loosened the tolerances on that and I overdid it and now it's wobbling. So that needs to be squared away. Come up with a better solution for that. Maybe a way to anchor it to the lower handguard. I don't know, I gotta think through that. Maybe just tightening it up and being very careful when you install it that you don't split it out. Because I mean, I did still manage to crack it while putting it on. So this is definitely a weak point in the system. I do have to say though that using the gas tube rail with a dot really solves your optics problem because when you are up on this guy, instead of being down here with your nose on the receiver looking through the irons, you've got your cheek on the receiver. 
so it puts your eyes way above the plane of the of the sight. So you really do need to have an optic on top. You could also 3D print some irons or install some, you know, backup iron sights on here. I suppose I don't see why that wouldn't work. You have a very narrow sight radius, but it's, <clears throat> you know, still something. Um, I have made accommodations for optics railed AKs on this, and uh, we do have accommodations for extended and upgraded uh, safety selectors as well. They, they dip down deeper, so we've got a notch in the bed for that now too. But other than that, you know, a couple little tweaks, a couple little things to change, and I think it'll be all right. The uh, frame is printed in PLA, just regular. PLA, not even PLA Plus or PLA Pro or anything special, with actually a very low infill. This is something like 10 or 15 percent infill. It's very, very low. And it was mostly just for parts fitment prints. And they turned out to be sturdy enough that I figured I'd run them with some rounds and see if they crack or break, and they, they didn't. I, I mean, of course, it wasn't very many rounds. Put some more through it, but I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to print this thing in its final form with a very low infill, which means faster prints, less material, less weight. So I'm very happy about that. Now the expensive and, and difficult part of this is going to be the, the handguard trigger mechanism area. This, now while it did hold up very well here, it didn't get very hot either because I didn't put a ton of rounds through it. But this I intend to plant in, plant? print in CF nylon, carbon filled, carbon fiber filled nylon uh, for heat resistance reasons. Um, not a lot of home printers, well not a lot of like low end entry level home printers, which is the design goal for all of this. It should all be printable on an Ender 3, which is like your default entry level printer. And this is. These parts where they're broken down, they will all fit on an Ender 3 no problem. Uh, but the Ender 3s won't print in CF nylon. So, not without upgrades. So I have upgraded mine. I've got a new hot end on it. I've got a new direct drive on there. And we are going to take that for a whirl once I get it dialed in with the nylon. Haven't given it a go yet. But that is the state of the project. This is the Grosent. And remember, 3D printer go brrrr.